Jim, I wanted to get you on the VIX because um, we're going to we're, go we're close to breaking below 20, which for a long time and I'm talking uh, since the beginning of the pandemic uh, was seen as some to be a signal and all clear almost if you could get it with a one handle. Uh, that would say a lot about the year to come, and, and we're awfully close now, yeah, down 40-plus I mean, percent in November. We don't talk about it enough. I mean, it really is amazing. Uh, it is uh, going in the right direction when it comes to what the S&P is doing. It's kind of confirmatory of the S&P. One of the things that I think is incredible about the S&P is, is that we've had a just an amazing— my favorite group is the rails. The rails just—they uh, are standing—the rails stand for commerce. And and they obviously don't have a COVID problem. David, have you seen the rails? No. Tell me. Well, I haven't. You know, I, okay, well, Union Pacific had a really, really horrible quarter. Yes. Okay? And the stock has got, oh, it's got one of those patterns you like, the, head, the reverse head and shoulders. <laughs> oh, I like that reverse head and, and shoulders. And the stock True. went down when they reported the quarter, which nobody liked. It hit 174. Mm -hmm. It's now at 206. David, FedEx. Have you thought about FedEx at all? I have because there was a Barclays upgrade this morning to, out, uh, to uh, upgrade to overweight. When the More pandemic collaborative future between FedEx transportation networks could signal the beginning of a multi-year upcycle. Multi-year. Yeah. Multi -year, 2023. Uh, it, it, this stock, Carl, it, when, when the pandemic hit, people thought that they're going to be the loser. I don't know why people felt that way, because the, the way that e-commerce worked, it's kind of like Airbnb. I remember when Brian Chesky said well, he was worried about whether they'd be a loser. Well, they were a winner because hotels don't have the kind of cachet of buying somebody else's, you know, renting somebody <laughs> else's house. Uh, I've watched this FedEx go up. I remember when, when, the, when they hit bottom, even they were in desp despairing on the conference call. I was like, oh, man. Yeah, we were talking about how long well, he's been Jim. CEO and, yeah. Sorry, Carl. Well, I mean, think about a year ago when the number one topic on our minds was international trade and limits on it because of tariffs and trade wars. I mean, that's when and not to mention uh, the difficulties in some of their operating models. That's what Barclays talks about today, Jim, is that you got to change the culture before you can get the uh, model changed to where margins improve. And that's what they see happening. Although I love that one of the first lines of their note is, yes, we can read charts and we know it's daunting to buy at these levels. There you go. Um, by the way, I had Cal Tomeo, and she used to be the CFO of Home Depot. She now runs United Parcel. She told me, and I don't know how you could possibly think of it, but she told me they are not going to miss the quarter. David, they're not. You meant some, a, a very good executive saying yes. they're not going to miss the quarter after UPS missed how many quarters? Quite a few. Quite a few. Quite a few. There was a lot of up and down there. If, okay, a lot so of volatility. If you have yes. a part-time job, at UPS, this quiz, a part-time job at UPS, do you get to keep the brown hat or not? Uh, I'm going to go with yes. Nope. Got to give it back. Oh, really? Yeah. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.